the second inning an hour later. Tom, we've got four mics going now, so you might need to adjust something in you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lacey Township. This will be our caucus meeting. I'll read the statement, uh, and then we will say the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to Public Laws 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Lacey Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one, Exelon's presentation to the Forked River Fire Company. How do we do this, Peter? It's just, uh, come it's come face the camera. Come face the camera. Yes, face the camera would be the best, yes. <laughs> and we're very pleased uh, Thank you very much. to provide this check, $15,000, to the uh, volunteer fire company. We take great pride in being members of the community, and we enjoy being a big part of the community. And yes, I had the great pleasure to accept it, and I'd like to thank Exxon for always being a good neighbor to us. Mm -hmm. always help us out on every time. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been great thank corporate you. partners and on behalf of the entire township. Thank you very much. Gary? Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. I'm killing him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I will. Thank you, my friend. So I'd just like to have a brief comment, if I could. Uh, Exelon has been a great corporate partner for many, many years. Uh, in our township. Um, their largesse is extended to some of our fields and to some of our uh, civic organizations uh, all over our town, uh, fire, EMS, uh, and it, it, it has been going on for a long, long time, and we're grateful to have them as corporate partners. Uh, they more than extend the hand of friendship to Lacey Township uh, when in need, supplement our budget. I know that everyone, including myself, Absolutely loves the fireworks on 4th of July, but for their large yes and their outreach, uh, we wouldn't have that. Uh, that's a large item. I think it's about $10,000 every year, correct? Correct. Um, so, we're, again, we're very, very grateful. So I want to thank them publicly, as I often thank them privately. So uh, just to be above board, we're very grateful again. Would anything, the committee like to have any comments? Who said it best, Mayor? Yes. Very uh, good. I hope, I hope that excellent is a... Uh, major factor in this town for the years to come. Well said. Item number two, Proclamation for Child Abuse Month, presented to the Women's Club of Lacey. I'd like to read a proclamation if I could. Whereas we all have responsibility as individuals and neighbors, community members, citizens of Lacey Township, to help create healthy, nurturing, and safe experiences for children, and whereas child abuse is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, gender, income levels, and whereas healthy and safe childhoods help produce confident and successful adults, and whereas child abuse and neglect often occur when people find themselves in stressful situations without the resources and don't know how to cope, and whereas children who grow up in violent homes are believed to be abused and neglected at a rate higher than the national average, and whereas it is recognized that no person can do everything, but that everyone can do something. And together we can create change for the better. And whereas effective prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among nonprofit organizations, government agencies, volunteer organizations, schools, service clubs, houses of worship, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. And whereas Child Abuse Awareness, Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing child abuse and show support for the numerous organizations and individuals 
who provide critical advocacy services and assistance to victims and whereas displaying a pinwheel or planting of a pinwheel garden in April will serve as a positive reminder that all children deserve great childhoods, happy and healthy and safe. Now therefore, I, Peter Curatello, Mayor of the Township of Lacey, on behalf of myself and the entire Township Committee, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2017, 2017, as Child Abuse Awareness Month in Lacey Township. And we urge all citizens uh, to do activities that strengthen families and communities to provide the optimal environment for children to learn, grow, and thrive so that children have the benefit of happy, healthy, and safe childhoods. Nancy, do you want to come up? Mm. Or all of these Please, come yeah, up. Yeah, oh, I'll take a picture. Come on up. Come on up. What? So right. That's all right. You got to face the cameras. Somebody like to hold the proclamation? Oh, well, Sue, thank you for taking pictures. Yes, I need new friends. <laughs> <laughs> means we have, I will entertain a motion to close the caucus meeting. Move it. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to uh, go immediately to the township uh, the township meeting, the township of Lacey. I'll read the statement. We'll say that the Pledge of Allegiance will be followed by a moment of silence. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to public laws of 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Lacey Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of the meeting. Please rise for the salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
An ordinance of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey amending an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey affixing and determining salaries, wages, and compensations of the officers and employees and members of the governing body of the Township. This is the Crossing Guards Union. This is their um, 20 hours a week employees. Um, they are going up, um, the starting and substitutes are going from $9 an hour to $10 an hour, and the other ones are getting 25 cents an hour, the ones that are permanent. Move it. Second Good. reading. Second open reading. Door. Open to the so, floor. My bad. Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Move it. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, on the motion on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Cartola? Yes. Item number, uh, item, item number four. Resolution 2017-115 authorizing the refund of a building department fee. Resolution Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey authorizing the refund of a building department fee issued by the Lacey Township Building Department. This is a refund of $20. The, the customer wrote the checkout incorrectly and we owed her $20 back from it. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item five. Resolution 2017-118, awarding contract for the acceptance of credit cards for tax collections. Resolution attached to Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, awarding a contract for the acceptance of online credit card payments for tax collections of point and pay. This, we went out to bid. This was the lowest responsible bidder um, for the collection use of credit cards and debit cards, either at the tax window or online. Um, the, the service charge that you would pay to have a credit card is passed on to the user. We're not allowed to pass it on to the bulk of the rate payers, and it's 2.69 percent, um, with a minimum or a minimum charge depending on the amount of uh, the charge is. And they also accept e-checks as well, and it's been a very successful um, program and convenience to the public. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Cortolo? Yes. I'm number six. Resolution 2017-119, awarding a contract for the Bayside Beach Maintenance Dredging. Resolution of Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, awarding a contract for the Bayside Beach Maintenance Dredging to Albert Marine Construction. Six <coughs> bids were received on April 7th for this project. The lowest responsible bidder is Albert Marine Construction in the amount of $169,969. This is, again, to do the Bayside Beach Dredging um, at the mouth of the lagoon. It's about 3,300 cubic yards that we're removing from that lagoon. And it will start somewhere after June 1st, which are the permit limits that we cannot, we have to wait. What? And just to be clear, which beach is Bayside Beach? Bayside residents? Beach is south of the Forked River Beach Bayfront Park. Thank you. So if you looked on Google Maps, you'll see where the shoaling is and you'll know exactly It's so all the way down at the end of Beach Boulevard. Okay. All right? Yes. Move, move it. We have a second. Second. Right. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor Curatola? Yes, item seven, resolution 2017-120, awarding contract for the purchase of auto parts and accessories. Resolution attached to Lacey County of Ocean State and Jersey, awarding contracts for the purchase of auto parts to Advanced Fastener Industries, Barlow Automotive, Beach Haven Automotive, Eastern Warehouse Distributors, Chapman Ford Sales, and Grand Turk Equipment Company. This is being awarded under the Stafford Township Cooperative Purchasing. Um, these are vendors that, that have bidded on this and have put in the lowest responsible prices and the township has the right to use them if they wish to do so. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curatola? Yes. Item number eight, resolution 2017-121, authorizing the purchase of equipment from the township of Barnegat. Resolution of Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the acceptance of two Harley-Davidson motorcycles from the township of Barnegat. Barnegat is uh, giving up four of their motorcycles. Lacey is taking two of them for the total cost of $10,000, and it's being paid for out of the drug forfeiture money. We are not starting a motorcycle patrol squad, so this is for parades and special events um, that we need them for. Move it. Second. 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 Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curatola? Yes. Item number nine, resolution 2017 122, <coughs> amending the temporary <coughs> operating <coughs> budget. Resolution attached to Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, providing for emergency temporary operating budget in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 48 4 20. This is for <laughs> us to start utilizing, well, they're actually working on the program now, but we need to expend the money. The distracted driver crackdown. We received $5,500 in a grant, and it is throughout the month of April. And as you notice, if you you text, you pay. Absolutely. Move we it. have a motion. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item 10, Resolution 2017-123, authorizing the acceptance of a tax lien premium payment. 
Resolution Attachment Lacey County Motion State of New Jersey authorizing the premium payment of $600 on tax lien certificate 2012-45 on block 149.01 lot 1 to be turned over to the Township Treasurer to become part of the funds of the municipality in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 54-5-33. When this went up for tax lien sale in 2012, the uh, bidder had bidded a premium of $600. They had five years to foreclose on it. They failed to do it. The premium comes to the town. Ooh, move it. Second. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. And number 11, resolution 2017 124, authorizing the refund of a homestead rebate. Resolution attached to Lacey County, Motion State, New Jersey, authorizing tax collectors to refund homestead rebates for a disabled veteran. This is on block 1148, lot 26. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item 12, Resolution 2017-125, authorizing the cancellation of taxes due to 100% disabled veteran exemption. Resolution of Township Lacey County, Rochester State, New Jersey, authorizing the tax collector to cancel 2017 taxes due on a property granted to 100% disabled veteran exemption and refunding the resulting credit balance. This is on Block 1578, Lot 26.03. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor Cartola? Yes. Item 13, Resolution 2017-126, awarding the contract to Caterpillar Financial Services. Resolution of Township Lacey County, Washington State, New Jersey, awarding a contract to Caterpillar Financial Services Corporation for the leasing of a Caterpillar Compact Track Loader 299-D2 in accordance with NJSA 48 colon 11-1-XSEC. Move it. Second. 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 Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item 14, Resolution 2017-127, authorizing the refund of deposits. Resolution attached at Lacey County, Motion State, New Jersey, authorizing the refund of deposits held for the use of municipal facilities. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. <coughs> Item 15, Resolution 2017-128, authorizing payment of township bills. Resolution attached to Lacey County, Washington State, New Jersey, authorizing the payment of township bills in the amount of $5,065,585.09. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald. Yes, except for the bill for urgent care. There's a, there's a conflict with that. So all the rest of them I'll say yes to. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. <coughs> And Mayor Cartola. Yes. Item 16, monthly reports. For the month of March, the Municipal Court collected receipts in the amount of $42,884.95. For the month of March, the Municipal Clerk's Office collected receipts in the amount of $7,984.95. For the month of February, the Department of Community Development collected receipts in the amount of $81,721.02. For the month of March, the Department of Community Development collected receipts in the amount of $91,289.23. For the month of March, the road opening permits were collected in the amount of $3,240. Recycling commodity collected in the amount of $711.55. Truck parking was, was collected in the amount of $3,500 for the month of March. And for the month of March, municipal docks were receipt, receipts collected in the amount of 48400 Motion to accept the reports is read. Move it. Second? Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Item 17, motion to approve caucus meeting minutes of March, 20, uh, March 23rd, 2017. Move it. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Item 18, motion to approve township meeting minutes of March 23rd, 2017. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 19, motion to approve membership in the Lanoka Harbor Fire Company for Zachary Cyanowitz. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 20. Uh, item uh, no, we're going to hold on to that first. But I do have an because we're going to do that after public comments. Right. I do have an add-on that we need to add on tonight. This is, again, part of the COA um, settlement. It's a resolution 2017-131, and this is just an update to the one we did in 2012. Resolution of Township Lacey County, Boston State, New Jersey, identifying the town's ship's intent to appropriate funds or bonds in the event of a funding shortfall fall with regards to the housing element and fair share plan. So we are not bonding, we're not borrowing money, it's only in the event that we do recognize the need to build affordable housing that the town would bond for the shortfall to do so. And this is all part of the settlement. And we did the same resolution in 2012. Move it. Second. 
Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor Cartolo? Yes. And that's all I have to add on. Have comments from the committee? Deputy Mayor Giuliano. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, uh, I usually never touch on uh, MUA, but I'm going to now uh, because I want everybody to be aware that uh, they're working on the hydrants uh, for the flushing. It started um, April 10th and it's going to go through the end of July. Um, the housekeeping task is necessary to ensure that the water delivered to your home is the highest quality possible. Um, you may ref want to refrain from doing laundry during the day, Monday through Friday, when there are flushing in your area. Um, if you call the MUA, they do have uh, a set when in different areas when they're going to be flushing. Uh, so that's the best thing. And their phone number is 609-693-8188. Um, and anybody that answers the phone will be able to help you to let you know um, what areas they're doing when. Um, secondly, um, uh, a letter came into my box about recycling problems at the county's uh, MRPX. Uh, um, things are being accepted wrong in there. Um, for an example, we had, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but question, do these four items have in common? What do these four? Plastic bag, bowling ball, styrofoam cup, and garden hose. None of these should be in the recycling. Um, uh, they did find bowling balls in there, so forth and so on. It, it's, people have to, you know, and I think what's easier probably is to, uh, you can go on to their website and they'll tell you what is responsible for recycling and what isn't. Um, that is uh, www.co.ocean.newjersey.us slash recycle. And they can send you, you can download to get what I have right here. It's hard to see or to go over the whole thing, but it tells you no shredded paper, do not you know tie or bundle paper. Uh, uh, it's just a lot of different things and some of the things that are acceptable. Um, so if we could probably get a little bit better with that, and you know, I, I think it would be good for everybody. Uh, third, Little League opening day was last Saturday. The mayor and I attended that. Um, as always, uh, the kids had a great time. Um, the players, it looks like the, as they were coming out, it was never stopping the team so <laughs> it was a lot of participants a lot of young children that did and, it, and I, it's a little hard on the parents but they understand it you know it's two hundred and fifty dollars to do it and it's and it's rough on them you know but they enjoy it and the kids and we enjoy doing for them the parks uh, that's what public works does the best uh, in this town like everything else they do is good but that is the best I mean the parks were phenomenal they had rain all that week and mm -hmm. it you never know. No, you would never know that it had rain. Uh, Lacey soccer and lacrosse seasons uh, started April 1st. Uh, same thing, fields, everybody's down there using them. It looks great. I went down there too. Um, girls softball at Gilly Park opening day will begin April 22nd. That's when we have our opening day ceremonies down there. Uh, Bayfront Park project is progressing. Hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll have a Memorial Day ribbon cutting ceremony, but it's based on the playground equipment and the gazebo delivery. Overall, the project and, and the contractor, if anybody's gone down there, it's uh, excellent, excellent job they're doing. Uh, Casey overseeing the whole project and every day it's, 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 getting, it's getting there. I walked the walk path there. Tim, you did too, right? Yes, I did. Pretty, it's it's going to be a beautiful park when it's done. Um, the township tonight, of course, awarded a contract to Albert Marine for the dredging of Bayside Beach Lagoon, focusing on the main lagoon and the two entering lagoons 200 feet down. If nobody knows where that is, that's the end of Beach Boulevard. You go all the way down to the end, and that is Bayside Beach area there. That's the lagoon they're talking about. Uh, so they're going to be dredging down the first two lagoons 200 feet uh, because the silt uh, that was down there. Yeah. They could person could even park their boat down there. Um, paving projects for the year will involve East Lacey Road end to end, and the uh, conclusion of Bayberry Village. That's our two main uh, paving projects this year. Um, 
Puppy Wallace Parse. I don't know, Tim, if you're going to. I'll talk about You want to speak yeah, about that? Yeah. Um, uh, that's about it, Mayor. Um, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And it's been great. Everybody enjoy the spring weather. And uh, happy Easter and Passover. Uh, so everybody enjoy. Enjoy the family. That's the main thing. Agreed. Thank you. Great. Committeeman Kennis. Thank you, Mayor. I'm feeling a bit chatty tonight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'd just like to wish everybody a happy and healthy Easter. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Committeeman Kennis. Committeeman McDonald. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as Committeeman Giuliano talked about, Huffy Wallace Park, which is, I believe, the first park that was built here in Lacey. Yes, it is. Uh, first recognized park. First, first recognized park that was in built Lacey here in Lacey. County. We are in the budget. We put in the budget. Uh, how much was it, Mayor? $240,000. $240,000 to redo it. And let me just sort of table down there or share. I just want to show this. This is this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Uh, if anybody has gone by Huffy Wallace Park and looked at it, you will see that it is in complete disrepair. The basketball court is is just come up. The the uh, swings and stuff for the kids are bad. It's just in bad, bad repair and it needs to be done. And uh, so when we, once we pass the budget, this is what it's going to be looking like here uh, with the ball fields and stuff. It's, it's, it's going to be beautiful. Um, farmer's market is back, coming back soon. And after much discussion during the winter time as to where we could move it, maybe make it better, um, we couldn't find a spot. So it's going to go back to uh, the uh, uh, Forking River Methodist Methodist Church, uh, and that's going to be on Fridays. Uh, we've looked at trying to maybe move the day, meet another day to make it a little bit more convenient for people because we know Fridays is a tough time to get down Lacey Road and so forth. But we just we just couldn't come to an agreement on it. So that's that takes care of that. The Bayfront Park, uh, I can't wait for that thing to open. Uh, I travel the state, and a lot of times I'll eat my lunch. Uh, I'll go to a Wawa or 7-Eleven or something and grab a sandwich. I'll go find a park to sit in and I eat my lunch. And uh, I can tell you this: I've walked it. it there's not a there's, there's, It's absolutely gorgeous down there. And Casey, uh, Casey Parker, is in charge of it, as you can see from our other parks, does a magnificent job. And I can't wait to see what the final, what this thing finally looks at. And. Um, and Speaking of Casey Parker, I just sometimes, sometimes we take things for granted, and we really shouldn't take public works for granted. They work hard, they do the job. Uh, the work is never ending; it's always coming, coming, coming. And I think one of the things is and we, we approved it tonight was the caterpillar thing. Uh, Casey wanted this piece of equipment. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have it in the budget form. He came back, figured out a way to do it, and he's done it with basically zero increase to us. No, no, not basically. There is zero increase to the budget whatsoever. And I, I just want to commend him because that's what I'd like for all our department heads to be doing is to figure out ways to do things a little bit better, a little bit more efficiently than uh, without having an increase on the tax pay. So uh, a, a big kudos out to, to Casey Parker and the, and the Department of Public Works. Uh, that's it, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, my comments will be brief this evening, and I, I certainly want to wish everyone a happy Easter, happy Passover. Uh, give a couple of quick updates uh, in the last two weeks. Uh, I've been able to meet with our liaison from Jersey Central Power and Light. Um, periodically, we meet uh, with them. Uh, we'll meet with them with our uh, police chief, our police captain. Uh, that was the case this time as well. Um, and so what we do is we talk about updating uh, critical lists for infrastructure. We, as a committee, me personally, I'll receive texts during uh, different storm events. Uh, and that could be a storm or a thunderstorm at any point in the year. As soon as any power goes out, I'll get an update what part of town. Uh, so that's, it, it's been a good relationship with JCPNL. Um, and then with that information in real time off the grid, we're able to respond and react a little bit quicker with our emergency services police. Um, we have two senior communities. There are people that may uh, be infirm around town, immobile. Uh, and so we need that inf information, we, and we need um, to know and keep up with our infrastructure, especially during so uh, storm time. It was my unique pleasure uh, to swear in uh, Bamber Lakes and the, their uh, executive board and their police chief at a fire installation dinner, I believe it was last Saturday evening. Um, 
as I have often said, uh, these are the people that run towards danger and not away from it. Uh, so very grateful for them, especially Bamber, uh, who is really dealing with uh, a lot of our forest fires out there, of course, with Forkid and Lenoka as well. Um, our Deputy Mayor talked about Little League, another one of the great things that we get to do. I'm looking very forward. I have a daughter. I know our Deputy Mayor has a daughter and a son, um, but I'm all about girl power, so I'm looking forward to girls' soft uh, softball uh, to throw out that first pitch along with my colleagues on the governing body. Uh, certainly we look forward to that, as we do every year. Um, I want to dovetail on a couple of other things that were said tonight. We, we heard Committee Member McDonald talk about um, no increase to the budget. Uh, and we also heard about distracted driving. April's also distracted driving month. When people get off the parkway, they come down Lacey Road, they'll see that you text, you drive, you lose. That's at no cost to the taxpayer. Uh, the chief has been very above board as a department head with reaching out uh, to New Jersey Highway and Traffic Safety, getting different grants for you, uh, click, it, uh, click it or ticket. You text, you drive, you lose. Drive sober, get pulled over. Um, this comes uh, uh, to pay overtime for any officers that might be dispatched on those particular details. And I will tell you, as far as civil court goes, that more and more of this is, is turning up now. Uh, we don't know, like when I talk to the kids at the high school, uh, you know, I talk at high schools all the time as a, as a matter of course during prom season. Uh, very shortly, a week from today, I'll be with the chief at Lacey High School. So this is coming up more and more often for summer, summer safe driving season. We go from about 580,000 people in the county to over a million on the 4th of July weekends and Memorial Day holidays. This is, um, if the car I believe is 09 or newer, there's essentially a black box in there, just like we hear when airplane tragedies happen. They'll know if you didn't try to step on the brakes, if you're texting and you smash somebody at 40 miles an hour. So I'm not gonna sit here and pontificate. I, I just don't like seeing all these things come across a desk and it's uh, very it's 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 completely um, it's something that doesn't need to happen so I'm just hopeful that it, it stops and people do put the phone down um, lastly I just like to uh, talk about I believe the other day um, our Board of Chosen Freeholders had said that this county is not a sanctuary county um, I wanted to reiterate that about Lacey Township we are not a sanctuary. I know that question was posed some time ago. We are not a sanctuary city. Uh, we treat everyone with respect, like I said, uh, but we are not Seattle and we are not San Francisco and we're going to follow whatever federal laws come down. Um, we, to the best of my knowledge, do not receive any federal funding. Some of those other larger cities do and that may be in jeopardy now with this new presidential administration. I'm not sure, but I wanted to be crystal clear on that point. Everyone is, is welcomed here, uh, but laws are the guide rails of society. Uh, without them, we have chaos, and we won't have chaos in Lacey Township. So um, I'm just here to say that and be very clear about it. And with that, we'll open up the floor to public comment. Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Kevin Flynn, Davis Avenue. Yes, sir. You know, I used to, at our, we, our dinner a month ago, you said I was all smiles, Pete. Well, you can see I'm not smiling anymore. I can see that, yeah. <laughs> yep. When you became mayor, you said, I'm sure you have goals or things you would like to accomplish, correct? Was one of them to be the mayor when Casey Parker retires? Because that's the direction I see things go. Casey's been here for 25 years has given his heart and soul to this township. And I could see frustration in him because this committee, I don't know what direction you guys are going into, if you want to downsize the department or if you want to start something a lot more work out, um, the projects that he puts in for. Mm -hmm. Nikki, you mentioned two pavement projects. Mm -hmm. One of those pavement projects is carried over from last year, Lacey Road, which was grant money. So technically, mm -hmm. you're only doing one pavement project this year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I remember Steve talking about how we have to pave roads, how we have to pave roads. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't at the budget meeting because I think Veronica heard I was going on vacation and scheduled the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the case. It must be a big uh, don't worry, I won't miss it this year. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe Casey put in for six projects to be paid. Uh, uh, there was there was a lot of projects. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I do believe the list one, never gets short. Two of them. You'll never get short. One or two of them have been up there for seven years. You're correct. Seven years. Do you, I, do you listen when he speaks what the average uh, life of a road is? How many? How many years? Well, it depends on the volume of traffic, but most of the time you can only get 20 years out of a yes. low volume road. Well, those two areas are pushing 30 years. That's correct. 27. Yeah. You know, I, I've been here for 30 years working. And that's all we did when I came to work here 30 years ago. We would pay from when the budget was approved till the money ran out, which was spring, summer, and into fall. From when I first started until the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, where there was no pavement done. And then things started to fall apart. And then in 92, Casey came on with the new committee. And it was all about infrastructure, fixing the roads. Well, guess what? We're headed back to 19, prior 1992 with the infrastructure in this township because you guys don't want to fund the projects. There's some kind of number that I don't know what it is, but you will not go beyond bonding for it. I'm not trying to say put the town in major debt, but there's like a fixed number that you are stuck at that you will not go past. What is it, Brian? I don't know. It varies every year depending but on what there's the like a, there's do. like a number you will not. We don't like to, okay, totally, fully, Bonding, to, we don't like to go over 10 million. Okay. Why is that? Well, it changes your rate. It changes your rate and changes that, your, your rating on that, and it also changes the interest rate. And we've always, yes. I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what years it's been, back to 92, 93, well, we've always stayed under the 10 million. So things can start to fall apart, and we're not going to go beyond. I'm not telling you that. That's up to no, a but that's, decision. No, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. The infrastructure of this town is starting to go down to two today prior to Casey coming on board. That man works 10, 11 hours a day, five days a week. And you think when he goes home, he's, he's done working? No. Who wrote the grant for the, the Fork River Beachfront Park? It was a cooperation of the engineering firm and Casey's vision, yes. Yeah, so he didn't just sit at work and do that grant. He sat at home and did work. He doesn't just stop working when he punches out. He's on the job. We, it snows. First one here, last one to go. He gives his heart and soul to this town. And you guys, I mean, you try and support him, but lately it doesn't seem that way. <clears throat> he wants to get stuff done before things completely fall apart around him. Well, it's starting to crumble. The equipment in the back is starting to go. One of the dump, actually two of the dump trucks this year, the bodies are falling off them. The guy went to go start to raise the body, boom, the frame snapped. Thank God he caught it quick enough before it was either, it snapped while it was up in the air or it flipped, you know, when it's going up in the air, boom, it could have snapped the frame, body flips over, rips the body off the, the truck. There's three single axles that are 30 years old, a tandem that's 30 years old, another single axle that's 29 years old. Four, those four single axles, they all go out salt. Do you think that they're gonna survive much longer? No, they're not. The salt is wreaking havoc on everything. Just besides they're 30 years oh, old. So give me an opportunity to respond. On behalf of the whole committee, it's not me up here alone. When we vote, we vote as a group of five. There's not an evening that goes by that's not televised where the, at least one of us or the majority of us don't say great things about, I think you heard it a few minutes ago yeah, but we, we understand I his value I get it Mr. I get it you know how much money he saves you guys in engineering fees every year yeah because he gets the plans and he goes out and lays the jobs out himself back before he came here that didn't happen he used to have to pay your engineers again to come and lay the jobs out you're if, if when he leaves this town is going to be sorry because you're not going to find anyone that's going to care and put in as much time as he does about this township. And no one with his background and knowledge. And Kevin, if the five of us could fund each, just for Cranberry Hill alone, I remember that road project was over $910,000.
As far as capital purchases, since I've been up here, this is my fourth year, I believe that we've purchased machinery to the tune of a little over a million dollars. I don't have the exact list, but in the last four years. So you, so that, that part of this township has been a recipient of, of attention and detail. We hear him when he talks, we meet with him. Uh, as far as Veronica goes, uh, he comes here, he pleads his case like the department heads, we show everyone respect. The fact of the matter is, we can't do everything every year. We have a, we have a budget and we try to do what we can. We purchased a $750,000 truck for Forked River Fire. We now, we also had to purchase ambulances. We have union obligations. We believe we've been very fair and above board with different unions around town. The thing is, we give our level best to take care of valuable employees like yourself and not only are you an employee, you are a volunteer in our fire. We understand that. We also have to answer to the taxpayer. I would like nothing more than to have a boundless budget to take care of everything, anything that we could, from the dock pilings down, downtown to uh, instead of doing anything in phases, I'd like to have it all done at once. But see, no, I'm not telling you, we, that's raised, no good doing it all at once because that's what happened back in the 80s when a town was rich. This town used to get the money directly from the power plant. Correct. And in 1986, they bought a fire truck. 87, they bought a fire Correct. truck. Correct. 88, 89. And in 1987, they bought four dump trucks, and a paver, this, that. Kevin, you're, bring, you're making you're, my you're point so, for me. Let me, let me just finish. You're supposed to spread things out as, like you haven't been. As that plant begins its closure process, and I've been very above board about with this anywhere, any civic organization I speak to, when we're looking at a closure for that plant, and that's going to, that decommissioning process is going to take eight to ten years, but each one of those years, that revenue stream is going to dry up. We have to plan like that. I can't let the legacy of this committee be poor planning and to overbuy and overpurchase. At the same time, I have to take care of employees, keep food on their table, do right by them because they've done right by us. You've done right by us twice because, as I mentioned previously, you're a volunteer. But when you're sitting in these chairs, you have to think about where your revenues come from. Uh, Committeeman Quinn's not here tonight. He's been a great asset. Stephen Kennis has been a great asset. They're working on town uh, center designation, bring more tax rateables in here, responsible rateables, rateables that won't pollute, rateables that'll pay. We, we sit down and we're going to look each year at what we can purchase. There's no hidden agenda. This budget process is an open public meeting we're on a television right now but we have multiple departments we have recreation department we've got to take care of kids in the summer we have police needs to keep the, like I said the guide rails on society we know you need machines we have union um, obligations all of these things are part of it it's no easy task it's what we signed up for and I relish I love that challenge and I think we've been very above board in the municipal part of it here uh, your taxes are going up $27 per house for a $275,000 home, $275,600 home. They're going up from adoption to adoption last year to this year, about on the municipal side now, about 27 bucks. Tonight, we leased to purchase another machine. I believe the price tag of that machine for grading the roads is $110,000. We've put in a maximum effort. We don't malign anybody. We know how valuable Casey is. I know personally how valuable he is. And I know, I see him out there, he's using rakes. If something happens at a park, it's on a Sunday. The man doesn't even punch a clock. He's, he's a godsend for the community. We do what we can do. I wanted you to know all these things, and we gotta look forward to the future, too, with that plan as well. Mayor, Mayor if, if I may. I've yes, had, sir. Uh, over the last three or four weeks, had a lot of conversations with Casey. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Casey. Yes, okay. and yes, no he, doubt. he is extremely frustrated. Uh, by some of our so we can see it back at work. We can see it. I understand that. I understand that. And we're trying to work with Casey. We do. We recognize we do have a problem back there. We have a major problem back there with the equipment. But we cannot fix it all at one time. We just cannot do it. We, no, because that would be the worst thing ever. Right. No, I mean you can't buy all them dump trucks. At well, exactly. Exactly. Get exactly. Consumed but, but, by a giant number. But at the same time, we still got to take care of the rest of the town. And, the, and, and it, it's, it's not an endless 
and the stream of money coming in here. So we're trying to work with it. Casey's starting to understand our predicament a little bit better. We're starting to understand his predicament a little bit better. We're working together. Like I said, I thought it was great the way he came up with this new piece of equipment because he wasn't getting it. And he came to us, so that, said that I can do some things here. We can do it here. Can I do this? We looked at it and said, is it costing the township any more money? He said, no. Is it coming out of another person's budget? He said, no. I double checked that with Linda Cavallo, our CFO. It's not coming out of anywhere. It's coming out of his budget. He figured it out. That's what we want. Yeah. That's exactly what we want. And you've got to understand, when that plant closes, and we'll know in 2018, the exact date that plant goes offline, we're going to have some problems. Okay? Go do yourself some uh, research, nuclear power plants that have closed, and look what's happened to those towns around them. I am scared to death about that. Now, we caught a break with the pipeline, with the gas line. And hopefully we can get it up here and put a gas, gas. Uh, they didn't put those metal poles down the parkway for nothing. I Everything understand. Is there. I understand. I understand. But that you got to understand that's 10 to 15 years away, just for the permits, just for the permits in this state. So we're going to have some serious problems here. Now I understand that the law is they got to give us the same amount of money, so forth and so on. But that's a law that can be changed. So we, we have to go when we start looking at the budget. We start looking out five, 10, 15 years. We got to take the worst case scenario, have to, and say what happens if that plant closes and they cut back from 11 million to 10 million, or or to a 9 million. We only get 9 million. Then what happens? Where are we making those cuts? Where where are we doing that? Because we can't survive. So that's what we're trying to do here. And yes, it's very frustrating. Veronica will tell you it's extremely frustrating for her. It's frustrating for all our department chairmen. And, and unfortunately, Casey's taking the brunt of it. So we are talking to him as much as possible, and we will get through this. And we are going to do some of these road works, and we are going to replace some of those equipment back there, but it's going to take us some time. And I understand that. That's why we gave you, when he asked for it, he said, is this the stuff that will help you maintain these for a little while longer? He said, yes, we gave it to him. That's the reason why we're, we're trying to, we're just trying to string this along until we can figure out what's going to happen with the power. And we've been purchasing the last several years for DPW. I mean, we just, that's the, the fact of the matter. I mean, there's been trucks, there's been, I believe, a crane, now there's a road grader. And, you know, we haven't put everything Two on sail board. axles, a tandem, and a roll off. Okay, that's okay. what. But those other trucks that are 30 years old, those are the trucks that are pushing the snow in these mm -hmm. bigger storms. Those little trucks, the, the yeah. mason dumps, they don't push the snow like the big trucks do. And sooner or later, they're going to break. Yes. And they're not going to be able to be replaced. And, you know, we have, and it, was, it was the joke that it's going to be a, a snowstorm that, that pushes Casey out. Because he doesn't like snow. Because he, he's the first one here, the last one to go. He's, <clears throat> out there in the streets with the guys making sure everything's okay checking on things his phone is blown up because he's getting the complaints from everybody because their street wasn't plowed first or whatever it may be he takes all that to heart he takes that personally that you know granted there's going to be complaints no matter what in a snowstorm but every one of those complaints he takes it to heart and it's it's because he cares about this town you're never going to find another yeah. person when, when, to when, fill his shoes. When Casey finally calls it a career, and we hope it's not for a long, long time, we, I don't know, we could replace it. Replace it. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? You'll find someone, right. but they're not going to get you're right. it. They're all like he does. No, no, you're right. You're right about that. I've said it a million times. We're, we're blessed to have him. But again, we still have, we, it's not an endless pot. It's not an endless stream of money coming through this town. We recognize the problem. We're going to be dealing with the problem as best we can, but we've got that power plant thing hanging over our head. And we've got to look to the future. And, and we, we so can't we, we're, just have year-to-year -year budgets. We need to start looking at things down the road and make things more sustainable. That's the whole nut in New Jersey. They say the joke on the, on the radio in the morning, listen to 101.5, last person to leave New Jersey, turn the lights out. Well, I say damn to that. I want to stay here and I, I want to try to make it work. I want to make it affordable for the young person coming up and seniors in both communities and everybody in the middle. And to do that, you have to make hard trades. It's not easy. And nobody, listen, we know Casey feels the pain. We, we have spirited conversations in the back there. 
We feel the pain. We take it personally. We love it. We have skin in this game here, too. You know where I live. I'm right down the street. I mean, we. this is our home, too. So we're working on it. We give you our, we've, we've shown good faith in the last three, four, five years. We're going to work on it next year, and we're going to work on it years after that. But that's the best I could give you tonight. And now while you're speaking of that new fire truck. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know Ray asked for air packs. Did you fund them? No. And I thank Exelon for the $15,000 check, but that doesn't even cover the cost of two. He asked for eight. Chief Graham Hall pr prioritized what he needed. We were fortunate enough to have that great corporate partner there that funded him. That doesn't cover two. We're still short five. So. Yeah, as the mayor said, and I had this conversation with you, he prioritized his list, and that was not a priority that he gave us. Well, there's okay. not going to be enough air packs to put on that truck. So however many air packs are on it, that's all the guys are getting on that truck. So it will not be able to be, to be fully staffed. It was five packs would cost you $40,000. Kevin, we don't want anybody to be without but any... Well, first, I'm at the, the well, top well, of the he, list, police and well, fire. Well, I'm letting you know there's not enough air packs to put on that brand new fire truck. I'm okay. letting you know. So maybe you need to go talk to Ray. And he can fill you in a little more. And I'll talk to Ray in the morning. But Kevin, will. you know, part of part of the budget, we're also giving the. You have to come up with five percent of forty thousand. No, 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 no. That's let the me, bonding let me game. Let me and think. then you lose your credit rating. Let me. How close to ten million are you, Veronica? We're right there. Let me. Let me. Let me we let went me to permanent financing last year for a bunch of old notes and bonds from the years because we do temporary financing, and we're over nine million that we went to permanent financing on. And then we just were bonding temporary notes for this year, uh, one we, million four hundred. Four ninety six. Yeah, one million five, one one point five million basically. Well, let me just jump in here for a second. I can't, I, I've done extensive research on the closing of power plants. Two in particular, uh, Vermont Yankee. Mm -hmm. They wound up closing their police force and went to county county police force because they couldn't afford to pay pay their police force any, anymore. And the other was uh, Zion, I forget, the uh, town of Zion in uh, northern Illinois. Very similar to Lacey Township population, about 25,000. It's right on the shore of Lake Michigan. Their plant closed approximately 10 years ago and they've not recovered. Their tax rate went up 150%. What happens when your tax rate goes up that high, less people want to buy your houses. Less people want to buy your houses, they become essentially abandoned houses. So the problem they're having is not only can people not afford the taxes, they don't want to move there because the properties are dilapidated because they're turning into like uh, rentals. And then the, the people that own houses can't afford to maintain because that math doesn't work. You can't rent out a single family house to somebody and expect them to take care of it. So the property values keep going down. So they're in a, a constant spiral uh, on their tax rate and, their, and the money they're able to bring in the town. <clears throat> in addition to that, we have to look, f the worst case scenario for that plant is that not only do we not get the gas line, which I'm not holding out hope for, that would be years, if not decades, that we're able to get that. <clears throat> you have to remember that that waste isn't going anywhere. There will be very difficult with anything other than an energy company coming in to, the, to build on that property because any other company is not going to want the liability of having their workers next to nuclear waste. So when we're looking at everything in the town in terms of where we're getting our revenue from, that is first and foremost the first part of the pie, first part of the thing that, first thing we look at. And since it's closing in a couple of years from now, or it's supposed to be, um, that's going to cause, until something changes, not everything will be funded less, in my opinion. So that's what you're looking at going forward. So it's, it has, it's, so the, everybody is going to have to learn to do more with less. Police well, station. Last year was a prime example, I'll tell you, because you approved the budget. The department heads were given their numbers. You approved your budget in June. In September, they're all getting notices that spending is done in October. So if they outspent their budget. No, no, no. They weren't even close to outspending their budget. Weren't close to outspending their budget because this was the Band-Aid. Take it. You're done spending and take the money so we didn't have to defer school taxes. We're putting we're, we're we're putting it for all those years to defer school taxes. I'm trying to build the <laughs> department heads budget their years, their year, try to get through the year with their money. Yet you give them three months to spend it and you pull the plug. 
in October, because that's what happened. And what happened was, after that, Linda we got to say yay or nay. Everybody put in their paperwork to buy their stuff that they were going to buy, put it in, and pretty much everything got denied. Denied. So you yeah. weren't given their, they, it may have said it on paper, but in all reality, the departments were not given their full budgets. We've done that the past couple of years, Kevin. But yes, it was, it, yes, we did. I know. But earlier it, this past year, you're correct. Yeah, and it's, so how do you. We're trying you, to build our surplus so that we don't have to do these gimmicks as deferring school tax because it is a gimmick um, and trying to keep, you know, funding ourselves versus using the gimmicks that the state allows you to use. So that's what we're trying to do by keeping the money here versus doing the gimmicks and you know we sold the property over there to Walters Development Group the money that we got from that we're trying to spread out over a three-year budget versus a one-year budget to try to you know fund ourselves yeah at the end of the day we have to make sure we try and hit our revenue numbers it's as simple as that yes. we're not See, we don't want Ray to put in to purchase a pack at the end of last year because he had the money well that would have been one less to put in for this year but but he wasn't allowed to purchase it and now we're behind the eight ball again because that's one less pack to put on a truck this year because it wasn't fun I don't know what we funded for them. I know we bought a pl we bought Kevin, a car we, truck last we, year. No, but <laughs> and he put in for air packs for this year. It was on his list of oh, funding. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. And we can, and we but we wound up you know again we only have there's only so much money in the pot. We I just we can't keep borrowing. It, yeah, if we keep borrowing, it's the equivalent of having a cast iron soldier just built on clay feet. I won't do that to the township. That does nobody any good. That's window dressing. And, and that's irresponsible to do at home. I don't do it. I can't do it. If you and I do it, it's trouble. Okay. Well, that's we what gets me. I mean, like you the keep deferred, saying. Deferred you deferred told me. Taxes. Hang on a second. You deferred in the previous year, though. You, that's a gimmick. You yeah, did. but I, we weren't able to not do it. So. Yeah. And you told me. You told but me. But that's once, a gimmick. You okay that? You approved the budget to defer school taxes. So what, you just what, admitted it's, what, a, it's what, a gimmick. That's not. That's not a, a, what okay. choice did we have? But we didn't have a choice. We're trying to not use those things and to self-fund ourselves. So we're trying to get out of those mechanisms that we've been but using. But slightly beside the, the deferment of school taxes, I, I never quite understood why. It's a paperwork snafu. Yes, yeah, I understand. But I said, but all is a snafu. Yes, I know. I understand what it is. But it, they get, they're getting their money anyway. They're just getting it's out It's not like we're date. not giving the school yes. 100%. They're getting their they're money. Getting their money said, but we have you, to you, snafu. It's a bookkeeper. Hang on a second. Things, yeah. Kevin, you had but said to me once a while ago, I don't know if you'll recall, Pete, just buy the fire truck. It's thirty thousand down, about twenty. I don't remember the numbers. For argument's sake, twenty five hundred dollars a month for thirty years. Okay, I because I, of the one truck we're getting rid of, we stretched forty nine years out. So well, and we, that's a and big thing to, to sign. This, so we're trying. We, we, we've been we, trying to work with it. We and we. I think we've shown you goodwill as well. We have a brand new truck. We've had about a million dollars worth of, of items in DPW in the last four years. If you include tonight, $110,000, we'll probably end up purchasing that. I don't speak for the rest of the committee. We, we support DPW and we are supporting our police and fire. And I, I would challenge anybody to disagree with that statement. That said, yeah, we, we could bond for a lot. We've worked hard to earn our credit rating, but then to do what? To fall down in a credit rating, cost more to borrow, go into deeper debt for a longer period of time. We got to be smart about it. And like Tim said, we got to take a look at what's closing here in the next couple of years. Well, then I got Then I'm not saying I'm against the road. I'm not saying I'm for the road. But how much money is sitting out there to build that road, and how much does it cost? We haven't borrowed against that bond yet. Um, well, the first bond was what three million, and they spent how much of that bond? A million. So there's two million left on that, which we haven't borrowed that two million. And you did that Wednesday morning, day after election, three million dollar bond, right? Uh, yeah, we posted another. So yeah. But we didn't borrow against that. No, but there's it's sitting there. Yes. So there's five million. Does that go against your ten million? No. So there's five. So I haven't borrowed it yet. <laughs> but there's five million dollars sitting out there that, at a swipe of a pen, it's yours to spend. At one, how much is it? How, what was the bid, the estimate to build the roof? Yeah, but that is the two. No. Uh, I think it was two point one, and we are getting a little bit over a million from the state of New Jersey for that. So it would cost us a million dollars to, you know, we we have that's to, from Lacey Road to Home Depot, or is it going all the way to Musket? Lacey Road to Home Depot, Depot, 
with the <coughs> drainage basins that are necessary for the barn to get to Braille Trail. So that's where the road's going to stop, right? At there. this point, yes. That's the only intentions that the township has is to go. Because, and it's working the same way that Bayside Park is. We have a grant that we're planning on spending. That's really what it comes down to. If we didn't, if we didn't have, the, I can tell you right now that if we did not have the grant for Bayside Park, they I were not giving we would me the project. Right. That was a one point three million dollar project, yes. which right. I think is insane. But Believe we only we had the we, it's, it. we had the grant for it. If we didn't have the grant for it, that wouldn't be getting done. And Kevin, it's I am looking for a grant for the Barnegat Pines over here. Um, there's, you know, we want to reroute some of the drainage to help with the quali water quality of lakes. There's some water quality grants out there. I am looking into that. Also, we need to do some restructuring at Bamber Dam because that's falling apart. I am looking into a grant through that for, through the dam safety regulations. There's a grant there. So I'm trying to find money so that I can get funding because the only way that we're going to get these projects right, approved. Okay. And I'm, no, I'm no road engineer or anything, but I think it would be wise to make that intersection if you're going to build the road at Lacey Road and a rail trail to go across into the pines. That's already on my calendar and, and I already got a price on the railroad that. Avenue. That's already part of my, uh, that was part of the budget a couple of years ago mm -hmm. to do that. Um, it was about a $300,000 project to do that, to tie that in. So that is part of the thought, con thought process because the county would then most likely put a traffic light there to help the schools out and they would prefer a four-way actuary versus a, a three-way actuary because they have all the conduit in the road and everything that, that for that. So that is already on the agenda as a thought process. And Kevin, we know you have good intentions. I know your value to the community, right? We just ask for the same from you. We got challenges here too. We're working with what we can do. And we're gonna continue the conversation. I don't know how long you wanna continue it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, you have my shell. I'll tell you what, Reed. someday, I'm going to sit up there and you Dude, can I know stand I up that. and I you can beat me you. up because I promise you I'm going to sit on that dock. I told Gary that and I'm telling you that. I'm going to sit up there. Okay. I, t I already had informed the mayor that that was your goal one day. I will. I've heard it. And trust me. And you're a good man and best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Any other comment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just want to back a little bit. Uh, you said we have the gas line over by the power plant. No, no, the the, uh, the pine lakes gas line. We do have a gas line. There yeah, there you do. Yeah, right. And that when the, the pine lakes approve that, uh, the idea is we'll be able to tap into that and run it up here and, and put the uh, a gas electric company on that on that piece of property because there's one back there now in case the power plant goes down. So. Yeah, yeah. So why would we expand on the gas? taking over instead of like decommissioning and cut, turning the whole thing into well they, okay first of all the decommissioning is about 60 70 years yeah. and that those nuclear spent fuel rods will never leave Lacey Township okay uh, because Yucca Mountain got canceled by Senator uh, Senator Harry Reid okay so there's there's a couple moving parts here first part is we never Lacey Township never agreed to, to maintain spent fuel rods forever so there's some money out there through your electric bill that we're, we're working with uh, Congressman MacArthur's office to help us with that. We get the power plant, it's gotta come, come up, I guess, whatever it is, Parkway or Route 9 or wherever it may be. But, and he'll tell you, he's a builder. Getting permits for something like that, I think 15 years, what do you think, 20, 25? Yeah. Before they can even start, okay? They are making application though. They are making that, we do have, right, they are making application. The other thing you gotta remember, is you got to look at this and there's another part to this by 2025 60 nuclear power plants throughout the country are going offline so there's access to the grid so we got to make it attractive for a company to come in and there's only maybe a half dozen to a dozen companies in the world that are going to come in so there's a lot of ample space out there for these companies so this is this is what we're looking at and it's going to take 20 25 years to get that project up and running. That's why we're working very diligently with Congressman MacArthur's office, the federal government. Um, we're, we're trying to set up a meeting with Exelon's uh, top brass to get get an idea as to what they want, what their ideas, what the, what the plan is and so forth going forward. When, you know, how long is it gonna take to decommission? They took a 60 or 70 year decommission schedule because it's gonna take that long. 
But, I mean, they're not going away right away. But, example, they give us $11 million. Let's say they say, okay, you know what? We're going to cut it by 10%. Yeah, well, that's $1.1 million that we don't get. Okay. Now, we, do we got we to go fight it? Court, that's going to cost us some money. All right. So, again, this, these, when these things all come together, it's a big problem. And, unfortunately, you know, we're, we can't, as we sit up here, and I, I say it in the back of them all the time, we can't plan on that $11 million being there all the time because it just doesn't make sense for us. So we've got to plan on the worst case scenario and how do we deal with that. How do we plan to replace it somehow? Replace what? The $11 million. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to get the gas power plant. I guess it was in November or December. Solar or wind or something like that. Now, not that piece of property. It's not that easy to replace that. It's not that easy to replace that. Yeah, but that, that market is kind of dried up, actually. Dollars. Right, eleven million dollars. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to replace well, that. No, no, obviously not. But in my head, this is how I'm you know, the timeline here is like you know, just make a little bit of money using the solar and wind, uh, mm -hmm. and then as you go through the process and turn it into the natural gas plant, then you know, you have to be betting on that where you get the gas plant. Uh, we'll have a little bit of money to get there, and then. If we still get the taxes, whether if they take off a little bit, a little percent of the time, we'll be creating revenue elsewhere, energy. which would cover a well, little bit of percentage that they're cutting off until we get right. the new gas plan to pay the taxes. I'm, I'm encouraged that almost immediately after the Pine Lands Commission passed that ordinance to put the uh, pipeline through, mm -hmm. that we had some companies come in here and start looking at it. Yes. Okay. I'm, I am, I'm encouraged by that. That means they're yes. serious about doing yes. it. Okay, and that's an, that's an encouragement. Mm -hmm. Whether we go to, and I'm a big proponent of solar and, and, and where, where it's proper, where it's, where it's, you know, where it's the right play thing to do, and the green energy. I'm a big proponent of all that. I'm also a big proponent of nuclear energy, because the footprint is, is, is smaller than anything. Right. So we, we, you know, that, but that's what we're facing. And no matter what you, you put solar or whatever you put into this town, it's going to take years because you've got permits. The biggest problem we have in the state of New Jersey is permits, getting permits. I said this a couple of meetings ago. Illinois realized they were going to lose two power plants within a week from, from the House of Representatives to the Senate to the governor's desk. They passed a law to change all that because they finally realized how bad it was going to be. Okay? We can't get the people in Trenton to wake up. Okay? And, you know, it, it, it's so frustrating. And, and I, I, I talk to Veronica all the time. And, and she sees my, here's my frustration, my boy, why can't we do this? Yeah. Why can't we do that? <clears throat> and it's the government. So. Yeah, I understand. Thanks, Dad. Okay. Good. Good evening. Any further comments, ladies and gentlemen? Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Move it. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, no problem. She, yeah. Now you have your resolution. Yeah, we got to read this. Right. Yeah, 2017. Okay, item number 20, 27, uh, resolution 2017 129, authorizing convening of an executive session in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Resolution attached to list the county board of the state of Jersey, authorizing the convening of an executive session in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act to discuss matters of personnel. Motion? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Mr. Uh, McDonald? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mayor Cartolo? Yes. Motion, motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor. All in favor? Aye. Nothing will happen after this meeting. <laughs> <laughs>